If you're watching this video, it means that you are a conscious human being who possesses memories. But did you know that science cannot explain either of these things? And nor do we know why humans suffer pain, allergies, or why we're charitable. So let's find out why that is in our video on everyday things that are still a mystery to science. At number 5. Consciousness At Strange Mysteries, we've explored the heck out of consciousness recently, but scientists don't actually have a working definition for what consciousness is. Is it an awareness of our surroundings comprised of sight, sound, smell, and other senses? Or is it something more? Is it the mind? The ability to comprehend who you are and what you're made of. Consciousness is purely subjective. Different people and different beings have differing levels of consciousness. One person's definition may not fit with the experiences someone else has. And attempts to explain and compare this aspect of human existence have been made throughout history. But nevertheless, in the days of automatic cars and salted caramel ice cream, we still can't define what it is that makes us us. 4. Memories One thing you may use to define yourself is memory, but science has yet to explain why humans remember certain things and forget others, nor why we've developed memories at all. We know which parts of the brain are responsible for memories and how they work, with your mind acting more like a game of Chinese whispers and not a video recorder like everyone thinks. Every time you remember, you change a memory slightly, and this is why memories become distorted as you get older. So if you can recall a particularly cringy moment where you peed your pants in public, just try remembering it over and over again until it's distorted beyond repair. But we still don't understand why humans prioritize some memories over others. We think the brain subconsciously marks certain memories as important, and this may be linked to our survival instincts. But how the brain makes these decisions, we do not know. Number 3. Allergies When you're having people over for dinner, it's tough when one person has a nut allergy. But even worse when someone else has a gluten intolerance or can't have dairy or soy or eggs or something that looks like an egg or a plant that's touched a wasp or foods that are brown and begin with the letter F harvested by a guy named Clive. Have you ever wondered why there are so many allergies and intolerances these days? One theory states that kids grow up in cleaner environments than they used to, so their immune systems are attacking themselves. However, some intolerances and allergies have been proven to be completely imaginary, with many loaf dodgers simply wheat bloated or overfull. But the simplest explanation for the rise in allergies and intolerances may be that we consume more diverse foods than before and that everyone's allergic to something. My grandpa never got to eat fancy things like peanuts or soy. He was lucky if he got a log to chew on. So perhaps it's merely our changing diets and lust for exotic food that's to blame for the free-form food fad. At two, being nice. Have you been charitable today? Perhaps you gave $5 to a hobo, or gave half a year lunch to a hungry pupper you found in the park. Why did you do this? What compelled you to be nice? In evolutionary terms, there is no good reason for humans to be altruistic, because if there were, we'd do it a whole lot more. There is, however, some evidence to suggest altruism arose to help ourselves and our close relatives as it means that genes similar to ours have a better chance of spreading. For example, 
A monkey will pick parasites off another monkey's back, but only because it expects the favor to be returned. Also, mongooses, dolphins, and buffalo will protect injured members of their group from attacks and bring them food when they're injured. But these acts are performed with the same goal in mind, to continue the species, to allow you or others like you to survive. Altruism without personal gain is seen as evolutionarily unstable. So it is thought that charitable giving is for your own selfish needs as well as to help your race survive. Your personal image and feelings are both boosted by giving and social acceptance plays a part too. But why we humans are so willing to help those less fortunate than us, even when it is detrimental to ourselves and the human race, science cannot yet explain. And at number one, pain. Humans experience pain on a daily basis. You stub your nose, get stung by a dog, burn your lips on a peach and accidentally electrocute yourself while holding a baby. But did you know that scientists do not have an accurate way to measure this pain? Brain scans can show when a person is feeling pain, but there's no quantifiable way of recording or analyzing the amount of pain present. At least not yet. One day, we'll hopefully be able to solve the age-old question of what hurts most. A kick in the nuts or childbirth. But until then, science must continue to make educated guesses. We know the sensation of pain is created through sensory transduction and neurotransmissions, and that this developed as a means of keeping us safe from injury and danger. But we're unsure as to why the feeling has to be so intensely uncomfortable, or why some people have a higher pain threshold than others. Heck, we don't even know how some forms of painkiller work. All that we know is that they do, and we're grateful. Now, here's a question. Have you ever wondered why some people find pain pleasurable? Also, why do humans make love? Why do we kiss? And why are certain parts of the human body so darn nice to look at? You can find out more about this in our bonus video, Sexy Science Mysteries, which you can watch on our Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash strange mysteries. This can be accessed by becoming a Patreon and signing up for a bonus video access at $2 per month, which also allows you to help us decide what videos to make, find out which topics are in the pipeline, and ask the Strange Mysteries team any questions you might have about our work, our lives, or our checkered sexual past. Patreon has become necessary since, amidst the chaos of advertisers ditching YouTube due to a few nasty videos, all other creators like us are having our arms twisted to make ad-friendly content. But we'd rather make videos about the things that interest you. And our ability to do this relies on you. For $2 a month, we can provide awesome bonus content for each video. And eventually, with your support, we can go fully ad-free and dedicate our full videos to just the juiciest ideas packed full of the most mind-blowing content we can find. If you can afford it, our Patreon page can be found at this link here in the upper right with the exclamation mark circle, description box, or you can visit patreon.com forward slash strange mysteries and sign up there. If you cannot donate, then it's cool. We still love you. And we'll continue to provide the best content we can under YouTube's restrictions. As you'll see if you watch our recent video on four bizarre scientific experiments happening right now.